Welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town of Amherst. This is the subcommittee TSO of the town council. This meeting is being recorded and will soon be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel. At this time, I would like to turn the meeting over to the chair, Councillor Dorothy Pam. How do you do for those present now and in the future? Um, I'm going to uh, call the roll and make sure that people can hear and be heard. Um, Anna Devlin Gauthier. Present. Andrew Steinberg. Present. Anika Lopes. Present. And Shalini Balmilne, we await. And Dorothy Pam here. Okay. Um, so we have a, the agenda is being, has been changed a little bit. I, we will not be doing the water bylaws today because the, uh, there was a lot of work <coughs> for the town to do in transferring some of the things we said on water to sewer and they have not gotten that finished yet. Um, Anna, do you wanna say something about the water and sewer bylaw? Nope, they're as exciting as they ever were. Um, and we, yep, we're just waiting back to hear back from Guilford and Amy. I think with vacations and everything, you know, we're just gonna need a minute. Luckily, this is not um, a pressing, pressing thing so we can give a little time. What I'm hoping they'll come back with is the um, updated water regs with what we've, um, what we were discussing prior wrapped into the document. And, uh, and then we'll just do the translation to sewer, which should be relatively simple. So hopefully we'll have those wrapped up in the next two meetings. Um, I told Lynn that I would try to get them done here, not for the first September meeting, but I think the second September meeting of the council. So um, I think we've got a couple more meetings to, to wrap those up. That's okay, so, so I had understood that they were going to apply the water to the sewer. You think that we're going to do that? No, 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 sorry. So they're going to they're gonna bring it to us. We're, we still need to discuss it and make sure that it aligns because okay. there are some things that are slightly different. Very good. Okay. Um, so we're also, oh, hello, Shalini. I see you here. And can you hear us and can we hear you? I just Wait. need to hear your voice. Wait, who is, are you talking to me? <laughs> yes, I am. We're, we're okay, sorry, I was just yes. plugging in. Yes, I'm here. Okay, and very I can good. Hear you. Okay, so we're all here. And uh, we just heard that the uh, water and sewer bylaws we will get to perhaps in the second September town council meeting. Um, the We have two major things to do today and then a few things we can talk about uh, in upcoming actions. Uh, one is to plan for the TSO September 15th public hearing on parking regulations as recommended by TAC on Lincoln Avenue, Sunset Avenue, and Elm. And the second one is to spend time on the engagement outreach proposal uh, that has been brought to us by Councillor Shalini Balmilne. Um, we will then talk on other things. Uh, is that, does anyone have any comments to make on that order that we would talk about uh, the Lincoln public hearing and then on the engagement? Uh, and then on the other, other items that have just been referred to us. Is that, is that okay with everybody? That sounds good, Dorothea. One thought that I did have as looking at the agenda is that I thought it might be interesting as we look, and, and I guess I'm, I didn't talk to Shalini about this beforehand, so she's not hearing this for the first time. I think as we go through the engagement and outreach proposal, it could be interesting to look at Lincoln Ave as sort of a case study of how we might have applied that proposal to Lincoln Ave. Um, just as we're going through it, I, I, we can still discuss it first, but Shalini, I don't know how that sounds to you, but I thought to give practical examples that might be um, beneficial too. Okay. Yeah, I think, and are you proposing that we actually um, um, visualize how it will apply there or do we actually use it for Lincoln Project? Well, that we will discuss later. Right now, we have mm -hmm. to do the legally required thing, which is to formally, um, set we the September 15th is a date so that um, Athena can do the uh, required ads and announcements and all of that stuff because without that we don't have anything. Um, other aspects of, of uh, what we would do we would discuss I would say either with or after discussing the engagement thing. Um, so I just want to double double check uh, when I hear the phrase public hearing, uh, I always say I get confused between public hearings and public forums. And I did check the notes and it said public hearing. Um, 
It is a public hearing and the public hearing is the one where there's no requirement that there be a uh, public speaking for as long as the um, oh, okay. town presentation. The hearing or, is just... Or, so, yeah. but it's a hearing and there are definite rules in the rules of procedure regarding okay. um, how to conduct a public hearing. All right, so that is something that I um, uh, have to find. And I think we should all, you know, maybe, um, does it, is there anyone who knows how to do that quickly and just post it to our, um, I guess, post facto to today's meeting or to next meeting perhaps, or? Um, I think. I had them somewhere, but I'm I'm buried in paper. I don't know how to get them easily. Um, Dorothy, what are you? I'm sorry, I'm I'm not clear on what you're asking for. The the, the he, Andy is totally right. There are definite rules in the bylaws yeah. about how to hold a hearing, and yeah. I've seen them. I don't have them memorized, and I cannot lay my hands on them. Um, do you maybe need them on calendar? Well, we're we might. I mean, we are doing whatever is officially legally required on this tonight. And there may be something in there that we have to know. Um, so are you talking about the time frame? I'm sorry, the time frame needed to to post. Well, it, it's whatever. I know there is a time frame, and I know that we're in plenty of time. That with when we pick this date to finalize, that there was enough time. But I just want to know if there are other rules that we would have to deal with tonight. Um, I don't believe so, but I can. Um, I'll I'll check and. Okay, uh, that would be, that would be very good because we just want to get this. We want this thing to be smooth. Um, mm -hmm. I start teaching again in September, and I don't want to be freaking out the first two weeks. So uh, I want this to be done correctly and smoothly. Um, okay. So, the, just to reiterate. Oh yes, Shalini. Oh, uh, so. I remember running a public hearing when Mandy. Yeah, I can't. I can't hear you, Shalini. I need a more volume. Okay, sorry. Uh, so I run a public hearing once when mm -hmm. Mandy Joe wasn't there for CRC. So I can pull up the format that she uses because it's it had a certain order of things where yes. you first um, get people to make comments and then have people to make comments in favor and then have people to make comments. Uh, right. I don't know if that is in the bylaws, though. No, it's in the rules of procedure. It's okay. The rules of procedure. Okay. So, our, our 14 of the PDF, but page 10 of the actual document. Um, but, Dorothy, there's not anything other than notifying the public through the means that were agreed upon. Um, okay. There's nothing else you need to do beforehand. Okay. So, if it's a public hearing, it does need to be in the newspaper. That's what I meant by notifying the public. Sorry. So, so um, okay. Dorothy needs to make sure that she tells Athena so that Athena puts it in the paper right. and on the bulletin board. Um, I just got a text from Jennifer Taub saying she was having trouble connecting to the TSO meeting. So I don't, um, I got sent the link. I didn't go to the web page for the link. Um, did anyone go to the, um, you know, town council mm -hmm. page for the public to get in tonight? Or I did you do it from the email the link? Agenda. Yeah, no, I just, no. I, I just okay. sent Jennifer an invitation. Okay, good. Okay, because it could be her system there. Okay, so we, um, and I just to reiterate what we were told when we voted on this wording that the attack recommendation, we, that doesn't mean that that's what we have to end up with. That's just, you needed to have something to, focus the debate on the discussion on and that is what we have um so um i don't know whether we really whether we want to discuss um the tac proposal in any more detail tonight um or uh whether we want to talk about further outreach uh when we're talking about the engagement policy um so, I mean, I guess I guess we should talk about the tax proposal just a little bit more, just so that um, we all agree about what it says for when we get ready for the hearing, the public hearing. Okay, um, and um, 
there are other other considerations that we will have. I mean, Anna brought up maybe no parking at all. Um, Guilford has said that's what he would like. So we don't know where this is going to go. We will have a discussion after the public hearing. But the proposal that we're presenting is prohibit parking on the east side of Lincoln Avenue between McClellan Street and Amity Street, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, prohibit parking on the east side of Sunset Avenue between Elm Street and Amity Street at all times. Prohibit parking on one side of Elm Street at all times. And then to revisit the parking restriction on Lincoln Sunset area for three to six months after the new UMass dorms on Lincoln and Mass Ave are open and functioning with students in them. The UMass administration has indicated that once the dorms are finished, they will reopen Lincoln Avenue at Mass Ave for through traffic. Um, I know there's one area that this that's kind of fuzzy. It says prohibit parking on one side of Elm Street at all times. And um, I went to take a look. There are signs on Elm Street right now about parking. Um, and I, I guess we'd have to kind of um, I didn't I didn't write down exactly what they said. It is confusing. There's not much parking on Elm Street. Um, Elm Street is too really too narrow for there to be parking. Um, and there are very few, there's only one house in that block on the south side and a sideways house, uh, maybe two houses on the north side. Um, but um, I think maybe it's no parking and it may be that the parking now is more restrictive on Elm Street than what this is here. So I have, have to really do have to check that. Um, so I think Dorothy, what we need to make sure is that, and I believe we did this last time, is that the basically the public needs something to either agree or disagree with right and so that's why we need that clear um proposal and so i believe that what we went with was the TAC proposal um, this is that's what i just read the TAC. yep proposal. no i understand but in our last meeting i believe we voted that that was going to be what we brought right. to the we did. here we did so um i don't actually think it's we can talk about it but i don't think it's helpful to to get too into it if that's um if that's what's going to the public hearing, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, I do want to give Anika a chance to um, get kind of brought up to speed on this. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, Anika, um, this would be a good time to do that because what we're going to do after the public hearing, we may end up with the um, vote on a motion that we would be uh, forwarding to the town council. Um, so. Do you have any questions or comments on this issue? Uh, so while she's thinking, I see Shalini's hand. Shalini. This is actually um, Jennifer Tobb's message that she is not able to. I told her that she Angela sent a new message, but she's saying she didn't. She's not able to. And also, Kim Tremblay, TAC chair, isn't able to connect either. Okay. All right. Um, um, do we have any suggestions? Angela, what to do, or Anna, what to do? Anna's hand is up. My hand was up about something else. We can solve this first. So in terms of the Zoom connection, usually when people can't connect, it's because there's an update that needs to be run in their Zoom account. And 90% um, of the time when people can't hop on, it's usually due okay. to that. And we know that the public link works because that's the way Shalini entered the meeting. You use the public link, right, Shalini? No, I use the email. She used the email. So none of us use the public link. I would um, suggest that uh, I Jennifer and uh, Kimberly try the public link. And if they show up as attendees, then we can bring them into the. I just, I just tried um, the public link. It does say, please wait. The webinar will begin soon. Oh, Angela, that's fine. We never launched it. Okay. So you. Explain that a little bit more, Anna. I think it just, we just went out of practice so that we do have attendees now. So Tracy's in the audience, it should work now. Oh my God, Tracy is okay. here from Australia. Cause I know Kimberly is, is, is Kim is from. Um, okay. I don't know where people are zooming from, but um, Australia. let me. Yeah, now they're coming in. Yeah, okay. so that it was just a quick, just a quick. Um, right, okay. Learning. Great, okay. Flip. Wonderful. So we're we're now in uh, in operation. Okay. 
so uh, Anika, did you have any questions about the uh, public hearing that we're going to be having on Lincoln? Can I make a recommendation, Anika, for, I yeah. don't know yes. if it's helpful for some context setting. Um, if you have not had a chance yet, so uh, for those who are just joining, we're just kind of getting up to speed on Lincoln Ave. The hearing is going to be September 20th, nope, September 15th. 15th, 15th. Uh, I said, I got there, I got there. It, I mixed it up for a moment, but I got there. Um, so September 15th and um, uh, Anika, what I would recommend reading is um, Tracy Zafian's uh, memo from the last TSO meeting, I believe it was, that we had, and um, that's very thorough, and that's what we ultimately landed on doing the hearing about, um, and so that would be my recommendation if you haven't had a chance to read that, and then the meeting minutes from that same meeting where we discussed. Right, the meeting that. minutes, very helpful. Yeah. Those would be I did get to the, um, the memo, but I have yet to get to the minutes, so I will. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, if you have questions, happy to answer them, but those would be my- That is my, right. That is yeah. right. I mean, you know, we, we want to make sure that everybody's um, able to participate because this is going to be an interesting event. Um, okay. So um, then Andy. I guess I would say, um, uh, Andy, and uh, call yeah, Andy. I, um, one is, is that we still don't have Jennifer in, in any way. And so- uh, somebody could ask Jennifer to sign into the uh, public link now that we know it works. Oh, okay. Um, I just texted, sorry. Can I you just do that, Shalini? I just texted yeah. her that right. to try Thank again. You. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. The other, but um, what the um, public hearing format is in Rule 5.2C. It says um, that it has six sections. Petitioner's presentation, and it's an interesting question as to who the petitioner is, but I do have a suggestion. Questions from counselors, public questions, public speaking in favor of the proposal, public speaking in opposition, and then any additional questions from the counselors. So um, the councilors, of course, are members of the committee who are um, present because it's uh, been delegated to the committee, though I think that we uh, have to, we could need to consult with um, Lynn as to whether um, other councilors should be permitted into the hearing and how that process should work. Um, but as far as the petitioner's presentation, uh, maybe we need to ask um, our TAC representatives whether they would be willing to um, take the role of petitioners um, in the presentation since we adopted their proposal. So that's my comments. Okay. Right, I, I think that's that's very, very good, Andy. Um, um, I think that that sounds reasonable to me. Um, my question is, I'm not sure about the, the, are we asking them into the meeting and can we ask them if that is okay? Or I'm not really sure if, if you know, when we have um, other groups coming into the meeting, you know, we have, sometimes it seems they come in and we even see the picture and sometimes they don't. Okay, so I've, I've asked the question, Anna, you have your hand up. I, I'm I'm not sure I understood your question. Sorry, could you? Uh, I was going to say something different. So. Okay, so so Andy said, is it okay to have the the um, TAC be the petitioners in this? So we can talk about whether we like that or not, and we can ask TAC if it's okay with them. And my question was, do we admit somebody from TAC to answer this or not? Oh, I don't think. Sorry, I think. Um, so my my impression is that the petitioners are who brought this issue forward initially, and that would be Councillor Taub and mm. uh, the folks that she was working with. And I think that we can bring TAC in to explain their report if needed. But I do not think TAC should be the petitioners on this because they did not they were not the ones who petitioned for this to be changed. The word petitioner is, a, I think, perhaps a key word there. OK, that's my take. I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Anna. OK, yeah. Can I also just say I agree with that? that and that's what we did in the last time when with crc because george ryan was not in crc but he was one of the petitioners so he was brought in as the right. petitioner so we can bring and jennifer and okay Neither. so yeah. i i think that is correct i just so that um 
that is good. Um, and I remember CRC, what you were referring to, Shalini, um, the structure of the CRC hearing, um, and it's um, not something that was made up. It's right there. Andy just read it to us. We will follow that, um, and um, that will be good. Um, okay, so are there, Shalini, your hand is still up. Do you have any additional questions or comments on this? Yeah, just a comment on that. And if you wanted the process, I can send you because after all of this, uh, this the TSO can decide to whether we want to move to vote to close the hearing or do we want need to leave it open. So that's part of the process as well. Okay. All right. That would be helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shalini will send the whole process through the vote. Okay. That's good. Okay, um, do we have anything else to discuss at this moment about the Lincoln Avenue public hearing? Do we need to ask Jennifer, whose hand is up anyway, whether um, she um, is comfortable with making the presentation and understanding that it's being proposed right now as the TAC recommendation as presented at the last meeting? Okay, so the hearing has the TAC, pre uh, the TAC recommendation, but Jennifer would be asked to be as the representing the petitioners to give her original, which was similar to TAC, but not quite the same. And then we would call upon TAC to give their proposal. Is that is that correct, Andy? I'm not sure. That's what I'm trying to get the group to okay. kind of come to a conclusion as to how to read that. Um, um, Section C1 hearing mm -hmm. format, starting with petitioner's presentation. Uh, but we don't really, you know, what does that, what do we interpret that to mean? Right. Well, because I just can't see TSO or TAC being the petitioner at this time, or TSO being the petitioner in this case. I think it is the people who brought it to. Um, to the committee in the first place. I, I'm agreeing with you on that. Um, so Jennifer has a hand up. Yes, Jennifer, can can would like to speak on this issue? Yes, first of all, I, oh, let me get, I'm sorry, I, for some reason, can you hear me? Yes, we can, very yes. good. Um, I don't know why my, I, I un, oh, there I am, sorry. I could not get through for like 20 minutes. So I'm sorry, I missed the whole first part. I, I started tuning in at 6.30. So I guess the, what I'm understanding is the question is, since the original motions just spoke about Lincoln Avenue, but then TAC recommended Elm and Sunset as well, mm -hmm. what do I present? Is that you the would, question? You would present what you presented to us. And then TAC, and TAC would, would, present. would present that. And we would then have questions from counselors, okay. would be open, and then we take it to the public. Yes, Shalini. Uh, I don't see why. I mean, if if the if Jennifer is and the group it, original petitioners are okay with the change, then I think we should just present the final what is being and what the public forum uh, hearing is being called for because it gets confusing otherwise for the people. So if Jennifer and all are okay, if they're not okay, then we should have them present what they want and all of that. But I, it seems I'm like happy to present the original. Yeah plus tax recommendation. Yeah, I mean, you could say well, this is what we started with and this is right, what right. has been suggested. And so it'll be just one presentation that this is what we started, but because of these reasons, this has been uh, forwarded and this is what the public forum is, a public hearing is for, right? Okay, and but TAC would be at the public hearing. And if there were questions, technical questions particularly, um, they would be able to answer those. So that, that sounds okay, that Jennifer will present the original proposal and then say she has accepted tax proposal. And then we discuss and TAC is, uh, both of TAC, Jennifer and TAC are available for additional comments or questions in our discussion. Okay, that seems fine to me. And this um, is September 15th. Yes, um, and... Um, what time? It would be, it? I guess, at the regular same, at the 6.30 time, um, because that is, you know, 
our regular meeting time and it is a good time uh, for the public, a 6.30, as opposed to during the daytime, whatever, uh, unless somebody has any comments on that. Because we, we're gonna just do it in the in our meeting time, 6.30, okay. All right. Um, so Jennifer, what you what you missed was we were talking a little bit about the water and sewer bylaw and the oh, future okay. action. So we weren't talking about pulling it out. Doesn't mind me. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're getting ready to talk about the engagement and outreach proposal, and um, we may, as it suits anyone, um, relate this to the Lincoln Avenue uh, case to see if there are th things that seem relevant or not, and then we're just going to talk about the other proposed other references that have come to us there are no town manager appointments um we do have minutes from the july 17th meeting that we need to approve and then we need you know we're just basically talking about next agendas so um are we ready shalini to go towards engagement outreach and engagement yes um so what I was proposing, I just need a moment to pull up my plan. Okay, and it's up. So what I was proposing is that I could share my screen and I mean, we can decide given that it was, sorry, what? Oh, I was just gonna say, Jennifer, I I adore you. And should we move Jennifer back? No, I was gonna say too, I don't need to be here, right? <laughs> she does not have to stay through the rest of our meeting. <laughs> I feel like I'm crashing your meeting now. I mean, yeah. you are welcome, but I was like, wait, there's more of us here than normal. <laughs> I'll just listen, thanks. Bye, thank you. Bye. Thank thank you. Um, and Anna is always very aware of whose time it is to go and that we should thank them. Sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, you're so both thank very you, no, that makes sense. And I don't notice them in time, okay. So she spent all that time to get here. Um, and I should say also to Kim Tremblay, we will not be discussing Lincoln Avenue in any more detail mm. tonight. Um, so we, we, uh, just to reiterate for you, so it's, I see that you're still there. We, Jennifer will present the original petition. So she will then say that she has uh, accepted tax additions to the original petition. And um, that is what we will start the discussion on and TAC will be available for any um, answering or whatever. Uh, so I will ask Kim Tremblay, who is representing TAC, whether um, she has any, uh, anything she'd want to say or comment at this time. Okay, um, because this no, is the time to do me. it before we totally okay. get off Lincoln Avenue today. Mm -hmm. So I see, I think I think that she said Kim no, is gone. Yeah. She, okay. she said no that she <laughs> very good. Okay. Excellent. No, I'm totally fine. Everything's great. We'll see you on the 15th. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. So um Shalini, you're gonna share the screen and I just printed it out again. And so I'm looking to figure out what I did with it. I had it hmm. minutes ago. Hmm. Yeah, um, okay, I can share my screen. And given that everyone had very little time to look at it, I'm proposing that, um, I mean, I'm actually, it's a question, how do you wanna proceed? My proposal was the that we look at each section, like there are, there's the purpose, the process, the steps, and the checklist. So they're basically four things and we could maybe just look at go through each one mm -hmm. of them and see what we want to add or change and even as i was running it in the morning i thought of other things that could be added to this because this is in no way a complete document mm -hmm. but it's a foundation and a starting point for us to you know create a systematic template for other committees in our committee um so i can share my screen and we okay. can start with the purpose. Anyone has any other comments or how you want to proceed with this? I, I think that going slowly is a good idea. Dia, uh, when I, um, a copy that I cannot seem to locate right now, I saw lots and lots of little comments and um, red marks and a lot of things to discuss. Um, mm. And I think that we need to actually just take our time and look at them. Right. 
Oh, so I didn't look at the change. Who's made these changes? Yeah, there's a lot of like edits and stuff, but I don't know who, I can't see who made them. Not, not, not me. Oh, it's just mine. Whoa. So, you know, what's uploaded is like this um, funky version of it. So is it okay if I just um, maybe share my version? Share whatever you want, Shalini. Oh, wait, I'm just trying to figure out you. Okay, I'm going to just share my version because it just looks cleaner. Okay. Mm. Okay. I think, Shalini, just to make sure that I'm channeling Athena, um, share your version, that's fine, but I think make sure that you send that to um, Angela right. to get in the packet. Yeah, my hope is that I can do what manager does, like real-time edits on the document. And so I'll put it on that um, uh, editing mode so that the changes are then recorded and then I upload, I'll upload that on the share, on SharePoint. Okay. Where is it? It's like even a few seconds feel like so long. It's like, oh my God, I'm mm -hmm. making everyone wait forever. Okay. It's the longest to you, so don't worry about it. Yeah. Use those moments to breathe, everyone. <laughs> okay, this is not moving now. Hold on. Okay, here. Can everyone see it? Mm hmm Yes. Okay. It does have Andy. a hand up. Andy? Andy, yes. Yeah. Just real quickly, um, I would suggest, uh, Shalini, is that when you send it to Athena, send her the version you're showing now without changes and then make a separate document after wow. you make any changes, then she has both and she can make a decision as what is the most appropriate for okay. posting. Okay, I'm just quickly making a two save. Okay, and now this one, I just want to get the tracking on. Hmm. Oh, no, no, it's going to create all this. Okay, whatever. We'll just start. Okay, purpose. Uh, so basically, it's written with the, with the purpose, the process, the steps, and then a checklist that is an easy reference for everyone. So starting with the purpose. Um, and I think given that, you know, we have these different stakeholders, sometimes they can have competing needs. And so that's why I think it makes sense to create a process. And the purpose of this engagement is that we're able to hear from the different voices and not, um, you know, just one group over the others and making our decisions based on just one group. So, um, so if you look at some of the goals for this plan is to increase awareness, to advance understanding of equity, gather input of constituents, vision, values, challenges, build relationships, deeper understanding, to improve community government relations, to reduce long-term costs caused by delays and conflicts when constituents are not on the same page. So that's just like a starting, and I think I took this from some other place. So can you think of other reasons why we want to add? Yeah, Andy? Oh, Andy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I wasn't certain about, and I don't know if it needs an extra bullet um, or an extra number, is that uh, we also want to make sure that either the council or the um, staff has the opportunity to inform the public about um, the consequences, including financial consequences of proposals. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm thinking about, quite honestly, is my experience from the budget side, because uh, um, I think that a lot of times that there's a sort of misunderstanding about what the limitations of our resources are mm -hmm. or the limitations of what the law allows us to do. 
um, so that you get a proposal to uh, do something and there either may not be the financial ability or the legal ability to do it. And uh, so I think we want to make sure that the community mm -hmm. is informed of that so that they understand the dilemmas that the council is working with. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Anna? I agree with what Andy's saying. And I think it's also, I mean, I, I think that um, it's not, I, I agree, keep that that number there, but I do think generally, right, informing mm -hmm. folks of the options or the um, implications um, beyond just financial. So I, I, I do think the financial ones, it, it deserves its own call out, however that looks, but mm -hmm. uh, I think generally implications are important financial and beyond. Right, yeah. Good financial, and legal, and other. Yeah, yeah, yeah category, let's like, list all of, I mean, at least the main categories, we can say financial, mm -hmm. legal, and if, mm, environmental, social, I mean, those are our main lenses that we are bringing. So maybe we need to do that. Financial, legal, social, yeah. and environmental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're also seeking, I mean, the social implications are kind of what we're also looking at in some ways here too. So right. full circle. Yeah. I guess we have that over here, but I think I could remove because this is a little abstract to advance understanding of equity. So I actually had a question about that. And Shalini, I apologize in advance. I didn't get all the way um, through this with my my pen, but I'm I'm curious how what that means in your um as you yeah, wrote that, what were you intended by that? Mm -hmm. I think this was coming from the idea that. Um, it's through this dialogue and conversation of different perspectives that we see how, you know, certain proposals can, I mean, certain um, decisions can cause harm, unintended harm, and, uh, and how we can create more equity. But it's a little vague, and I, I agree. Um, is there a way to clarify, make it more, to advance understanding of equity through an understanding of different perspectives and or the less or the minority like because basically people who don't speak up or are afraid to speak up their voices are not reflected in our decisions i think so what i'm hearing you say shalani if i can reflect back is that to build a more informed perspective um i don't necessarily see it being an automatic uh, advancement of our understanding of equity. I think that there's other things that we'd have to do. Um, but I do think that, you know, to, to ensure broad perspective, right? Like to ensure multitudes of perspective or something like that. Um, I liked your first phrase, more informed perspective. I think that's- I, As soon as I said it, I forgot what I said. So I'm glad you remember. No, more informed, I had I wrote it down. Yeah, so more to informed perspective. I think that gets it too. Perspective, I'm just gonna, and equity, not understanding, but and equity. How's that? Yes, I'm still, at the, uh, not everything involves equity. And right. Um, I, I, I think that's what what bothered me about the way it was worded because um, if equity is not really a part of what it's what the proposal are is about, then throwing in equity gets into this question: Well, what in the heck do they mean by that? Mm -hmm. Anika is a hand. Anika. I was oh, going Anika. to just maybe push. Maybe you know include that when necessary down with um, implications, right. financial consequences. Okay. We were having uh, this conversation in um, GOL the other day, just really around um, equity and what that is, and just mm -hmm. sometimes this perceived impression that people are always on the same page with what that is, and. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not, and really just aside from you know the the definition, which can still be interpreted in ways, um, and then also further just you know discussing that just coming in um, as counselors that we should just you know be looking at everything through that lens, um, 
always and when when appropriate so it could be yeah i think if you mm -hmm. put it add it with the yeah the financial so consequences that I, would make i i agree with you anika i think that we d we keep it out of second one but and add it to um eight i'm still not sure what the word is and maybe anna you have the phrase to add that concept to eight it's it goes under social mm -hmm. uh, but we wanted to um have a separate separate word for because we're trying to remember to think of it more often um yeah i know um so i think sorry i need to write this down so i forget i think that what i'm stuck on is that by saying the purpose of I, I disagree with Andy. I do think every single proposal that we have has, and Andy, I actually, I'm not sure this is what you were saying, but I do think that every everything that we come across has a tie to equity because that's how the world works, right? Um, mm -hmm. In the sense of it has a tie either to inequities or it's the result of an, right? Like I, I think that there's always a tie and where that leads me is that I do think that we need to be, you know, considering that, I know this is turning into sort of that buzzword, but that equity lens, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, for me, that's what is dealt with by the consideration for implications. And that's what we're dealing with by, or that's, that's part of the reason to have this is to mm -hmm. sort to, to gain informed perspective. Mm -hmm. What I don't want is I don't want, uh, equity takes intention, right? And so equity isn't inherent. And I think that what we need to be doing in, in outlining the purpose of this is that we're seeking to build a more equitable perspective, right? I don't think that we can promise it because we haven't seen this in action. So um, I think that's that's what was making me uncomfortable with it is I, I think that the purpose of this is to build a more informed perspective, maybe then to say in order to provide more equitable governance or something like that. But I, I don't, I get nervous saying that it's a, a guaranteed thing. Like this is something right, that we're intentionally right. It's towards. more like our intention. It's more towards our intention for doing that, but we can't promise it will be. So I guess advance is is a fairly broad term that, so should we put it back there to advance an informed perspective to promote, to promote equitable, you said something, promote equitable, promote to? Um, I, think if, I think if we said to, I think we could say something like to develop an informed perspective. I don't actually necessarily think they need to be in the same line. Um, mm -hmm. I'm fine if they're, I mean, it's not, it's not a hill I feel like dying on, but um, I don't necessarily think that that's the, quite the right place. Um, Cause you can also have an informed perspective and still not make the, the right. equitable just decision. So I think that, yeah. I think it should, it should go in, it's a con, it's a consequence, you know? Um, yeah and this way it's it's not it's, it's not you know it it shouldn't be presented as a choice mm -hmm. I, I have a suggestion that we add the word the word all uh deeper understanding of values needs and recommendations of all people living and working in amherst um values, needs, but i all. i think yeah, i think okay, if we make it a good. separate thing mm -hmm. there i think i think that it's in what we are saying here that's um, true you know so uh -huh. that's true it is it's i guess okay then let's just add it over here equity and then as we move forward right, we right. can see are we actually mm -hmm. acting or do putting actions in place and strategies and actions in place that will uh move us towards making equitable decisions mm -hmm. that sounds good okay and like i said like maybe this is like a first reading and then y'all will have time to sleep on it or read it again. And it's a fairly easy document to add. So if things percolate and, and you have other things, we can come yeah. back next week, next time and add to it. Okay, the process. Um, okay, so this was more like how do, com how can committees, like what does it look like in action, right? So like, let's say we've received, um, the zero waste bylaw recommendation for the TSO to review and whatnot. 
So one of the, maybe the, fir the first things might be that we, you know, we'll go through the first three, what it's saying is like all committees can sort of go through the first few steps to define the problem. What is the problem we're solving for? And then who, who is being, uh, and do we need to engage the community or stakeholders with research? I mean, because not every problem or issue will involve community engagement. So the first step is just to even figure out what level yeah. of stakeholder engagement we will mm -hmm. need. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Anna, I see your hand. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm stuck on this. Can you give me an example of a problem that we would not want community engagement on? I'm just thinking like GOL uh, kind of, that's probably where do they always, Anika, are you on GOL? Yes. and. Um... You know, so we're actually moving into some, you know, subjects and agenda items that um, we actually had to, you know, pause um, to uh, pause last meeting because we will. So, um, you know, just really starting to explore how um, how that happens and when. I mean, we were talking mm -hmm. about bylaws, so there'll be, you know, um, different groups of people, but. Yeah, I definitely do not see this being um, GOL being exempt. Not always, but like certain things. I mean, I guess maybe I'm, I'm just leaving it open, the idea that that's possible. And I mean, it's it doesn't mean that it just means going through the steps, which is the first step is what is the problem we're solving for? And um, within that, it's what are the, you know, uh, there's certain questions that people can go, the committee can go through it. And then do we need to engage the community? And within that, there are other questions like, does this issue have an impact on environmental, economic, racial health impacts? Does it um, uh, have, mem have community members voiced an interest or concern or opposition to this project? Uh, would it help our project achieve equitable outcomes for our community members? And, um, d d you know, are we going to ask for funding from, so whenever it's impacting the community, which Anna, you're right, in most cases, the decisions we're making are going to impact. Um, so the answer to that will probably be, yeah, it is impacting and we do need to engage. Yeah. And also, sorry, if we have, no, Anna, your hand is up. Yeah, Anna. Please go. We have, um, you know, even when you see some of the meetings, like we have two people with us, thank you. But, um, you know, if there's a tool that will increase, um, you know, community engagement, maybe we would have uh, more people who, will, who would be coming to the meetings and interested and actually want to participate. So it could be more of, do we need, instead of do we engage or how? You know how do we engage oh that's coming that's definitely coming this is just even deciding like what you know how is this impacting the community in what ways and then how question is that's the whole focus of this plan is the how which is going to be over here so who are the stakeholders first identifying who, like you know with staff committees uh like you know we talk about cssjc like when do we bring in ecac jack which committees are being impacted or we need to involve them uh which populations are being impacted what businesses or nonprofits? like so it's, this is going to be like first even just identifying the stakeholders and then is the actual how what questions do we ask them? Because that's the other issue where we, I find we get stuck is where people generally come and we want this and we don't want this, you know, it's kind of, but what we really, through our own questions, we can invite more sharing of people's lived experiences. What are they, you know, what's working well for them? Where are they finding the challenges? How are they using these facilities? So by asking different questions, we're gonna get different input rather than um we want this project or we don't want this project you know what i'm saying so anyway i'll come to that but i think okay, Anna, you had your hand up first Wait, yeah. yeah um i'm i'm very uncomfortable with the question being do we need to involve stakeholders i can't i can't get on board with that um i think that it's uh or do we need to engage the community i just i, I can't um because i think that we 
I don't necessarily, I don't think that there's ever an issue that doesn't impact our community. That's why we're here. And I don't mm -hmm. think that there's ever an issue where we should be saying, no, we don't need to engage our community, right? So mm -hmm. I think that there's a reframing of this that might be um, possible sure. to get at what the lower down questions are asking. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, how are, how is our community impacted by this? Or, um, you know, how might the community have input or, um, I know that you said later on, we ask how might we engage the community, mm -hmm. but um, I think that those are, I, I don't think a binary question, we need to engage the, the communities. Okay, um, we can change that in a moment. Let me just hear what, Andy, are you talking about the same question? A um, little bit, if you get, if there's more to be done, but I was thinking about, I'll tell you, is that I think, uh, what in, the, in two sentences, Mm -hmm. I think that it would be good after we've got a draft of this to ask other committees to look at it and to mm -hmm. see how it applies to actual experiences they've had with issues that were dealt with within the committees. The second sentence being, I really have problems figuring out how this applies to the budget. And mm the major role of the finance committee right. because the um, the charter is so specific and state law is so specific on process mm -hmm. and there already is a requirement for a budget hearing for but it's a more formal kind of budget hearing because it's around the budget that's specifically proposed uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really at a loss as to whether um, how the finance committee's role fits into this whole process. Well, you, know, you just answered it that the public hearing is one of the ways you're engaging. That's already built in. So you are still engaging. It's just like you're engaging them in a particular way. And I do have public hearing as one well because the goal of this is to utilize the existing tools and um, way channels like public forums hearings district meetings things that are already in place and it's just about formalizing it so that we're all utilizing them in a consistent way I'll so, be yeah, very, we, yeah to be very specific um you know the charter in which is built on state law so both Mm -hmm. specify that the town manager proposes a budget and we consider the budget as proposed by the town manager. So you get into this question as to what fits and what doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. I really need, you know, I, I think I need to go back and look at it again separately with that lens. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anna, do you want to? Yeah. Um... So I, I'm thinking about what Andy's saying, and I'm curious, Andy, is there anything, if we we meet the minimums that set by the charter and by state law, is there anything preventing us from going beyond that and doing other outreach or doing other engagement? We can do other engagement, but you don't want to um, mislead the public into thinking that okay. we're forming a budget um, and that they can say, we'd like to do this, which is totally something that has not been done before and is not um, a part of the town manager's recommendation because we don't have the financial or legal authority to do that. Right, we're not doing participatory budgeting, but it's mm -mm. But when we do the outreach, it, it would just be, it would still be within the bound, like we would need to make sure that those bounds are clear to the folks that we're engaging with, but we could still, do some other engagement without kind of misleading the public into thinking. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, the other thing that I have to remind you about is that uh, the charter is very restrictive on the finance committee that the finance committee receives the budget on um, May 1st um, or the first working day after May 1st and has 30 days to complete its process, including its hearing, mm -hmm. and turn it back to um, the council, which then has to adopt the budget by the end of, before the beginning of the fiscal year, which is the end of June. So um, setting up a process 
it envisions a long extended period doesn't work when you've got that constraint. My other question, um, Shalini, if I, if I might, mm -hmm. is uh, are you suggesting, you had said that you wanted this to, I think when I first was thinking about this, I was thinking about it just for TSO and then we're talking about kind of the full council. So are you proposing that these be codified in our rules of procedure? Hmm. That's where our other, I mean, that's where, the other ways that we yeah, I, haven't thought of, I haven't thought about that to me like i don't know and i don't care it, it's people who deal with that stuff can figure that out for me it's just important that you know we all start at the committee levels because like in crc we're already sort of doing that with the rental registration and like i mentioned earlier we have like 300 you know responses because we actually went systematically created a survey you know, and use different stakeholders. So I feel like if we do do simple things, we can get a lot more engagement. And which is why I think this question was there. It's also partly, I mean, I'm happy to change it because I agree that we should have engagement for everything. But I think it was to remove the fear of some, like I think it was uh, Dorothy who once said like, oh my God, that's a lot of work, you know, to do that. And so the point was not to scare the counselors that, for everything you're gonna do. So maybe it's just the level of engagement is the question or um, you know, reason for engagement. But I think it's a good question to, to ask, like, do we want to codify it in the rules? Um, I'm gonna recognize myself. Yeah. Um, you started off using the word can, and I like that. It's not must or should. <laughs> It's that these are things that you can do. Uh, I think that allowed, gives a lot of leeway to committees to decide what is appropriate in individual cases. Um, when I said it's a lot of work, not that it would scare counselors, but that we wouldn't have time to do it. Um, mm -hmm. You might say, yeah, yeah, bring it on, but not it must not be possible. Not have to add those extra meetings, the extra this, the extra that. But um, this is, and I, so I wouldn't be for codifying it. Um, I see this as a, as a detailed exploration of the whole idea and presenting in a very logical way, many things that we can do and think about. And I think that, you know, for particular situations, you'd say, well, these two are things we really need to do. And let's focus on that. So that, that's just my two cents there. If people want to argue that, then Floor yeah, that's is a good question to put maybe that can when we go into the town council uh, when we take it at that level that could be one of the questions that the council can decide whether they would like to see it at some level because it's i don't think it's time consuming as much as it's a process of just going through that we have thought through mm -hmm. you know these things yeah so, yeah anna I'm not necessarily uh, for or against uh, codifying it, although Dorothy, you know, I love to argue. Um, but I think that uh, I, I just think I'm, I was trying to picture where this was going. And so I do think that, you know, when we say must, that for me would mean it needs to go in the rules of procedure. And if not, I think we need to think about um, at some point, and I don't think this is like right now, but I do think it might be worth thinking through, is there a light version of this? Is there a medium version of this? Like, how can we make this accessible for, for folks? Um, to to use so anyway that's yeah that. and i think that that could be that maybe this section rather than being do we need it could be what level of engagement is needed mm -hmm. you know some and i can and, and you know go back and let's think of changing the questions a little bit but this would help to determine what level of engagement because if it's impacting people's money or if it's impacting the environment and da, da, da. so um i guess um, well, wh where did you see must? I am, Anna, I'm with you. I don't want must. I thought you said must. I was just asking. I said, I said that I liked that she said can. Yeah. I, oh, oh, great. Perfect. That's what, that was my original question was, right. I was asking can, if that was the these vision. These are available to you. Yeah, yeah. You it's... will tailor it, but we could get ourselves where we're absolutely paralyzed and cannot move forward and act if we make too many things required. But, um, you know, it is just like a checklist, you know, that we do put in a syllabus. 
You're not going to do all of those things, but right. it's a way of reminding, yeah, we got to say, think about that. We got to focus on that. It helps us remember the whole, the, the many dimensions mm -hmm. of the thing we want to do, but you right. can't do everything that's listed there. Right. And this so. is not showing the changes I'm making, so I don't know what's happening. Yep. Maybe it is. Who knows? Okay. Anyways. Um, but I did, I did have a question of the order of your steps. Yeah. Um, somewhere you had, I guess it was, maybe it was before that you had, um, do we need community engagement? And that was like step three, two, and then you had two. And I thought, why doesn't it go in front of move down a little bit further to where you talk about particular community engagement? I you mean, know. before you go down, it could go. So the first is generally the problem statement. Like I think just clarifying what are the goals for, yeah. and for because solving. Because you look at this, you say, what do we know and not know? I think you have to mm -hmm. ask that, answer that before you talk about do we, what, the, the, the level of community engagement. I would think first get your facts and what your intention is. And then when you get to who is impacted, then we talk about mm -hmm. community engagement. That, that's just my thought of it, the logical order of things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I am inclined to agree. I think for me, it's typically that's, I mean, that's, that would usually be my starting point too, is um, what's the problem we've been presented with, who is impacted and how, and then we also might then drill down to the root problem again, because um, sometimes it changes, but uh, I think that asking that question first is going to inform the level to which we need to engage because if the answer to that question of who is impacted by this and how is, you know, again, I doubt this would ever happen, but is these five people right here, um, then our, our approach to the level of engagement is going to look different um, because we're going to be able to do something different. So I, I mm -hmm. agree with Dorothy of moving that step up feels more natural to me, but so I also- Stakeholder I, one, right? Step four, make it easy. identification. Yeah, mm -hmm. make step four, step two. Step I would make it step number two. Two, okay. I think, yeah. But the, but but here's the mm -hmm. thing, though. Here's my caveat: is that I haven't gotten all the way through this yet. So I, it's possible that I would change my mind. Um, but it's just it's on the all, face of it. Yeah. No, I right. think that makes sense that we could. Okay. I was not, just not thinking. Two, but three. Mm, sorry, go ahead, Dorothy. I would put it in three. Sorry. I mean, Nika's hand is up because yeah. what we know and what we don't know, I think, is like we got to figure that out first. But. Um, I was I was just going to add that, you know, getting the facts straight and knowing everything about it will also determine how, you know, and are there limits to how you can engage uh, with community and not. So, and, you know, if if that's the first and you don't have to, we, you know, we wouldn't have to backtrack and say, no, actually, you know, you wouldn't be able to participate here. Or, yeah, right. So it's clear from so the beginning. Okay. That, that seems to be we're kind of saying, what is the problem? What do we know? What do we not know? Who is oh. impacted? And then we get into the level of what are the details about community engagement? We know we're going to do it, right? But as Anna said, it can be a very small community. It can be a very big community. Um, and different problems, it, it will be different in different situations. Um, hmm. What did I miss? Oh, the, the level. Okay, so I have it this way now, the problem, and then who is it impacting? Uh, and then what do we know? And then um, maybe what do we know? And then the level of engagement. Mm -hmm. And then the actual engagement. So I guess you're seeing what do we know in a different way. You don't mean what do we know about the problem? Because I would see that has to be number two. Do you, you mean what do we know about the people who are impacted or I think yeah sure. I th yeah I think because just firstly uh if once we know who all we are thinking about mm -hmm. then going into okay what do we already know about this the okay. problem and vis-a-vis -vis with respect to the different perspectives right. so I think that makes sense to have right. who so is impacted what do we know about yeah. the people affected or the people impacted? yeah not yeah. about the problem okay mm -hmm. and right. it is a reiterative process it should be circular kind of right, really because right. we're going to sort of go back and forth right and and we and people will mm -hmm. um okay 
so I think we made some good progress here. And then in terms of the questions itself, I think we do need a different set of questions maybe for determining the level of engagement or what are the reasons for engagement. Can we finalize this part? I mean, this is going to go down. So this is going to be the level of engagement question maybe, or it's going to be either level or what, I don't know, kind of reasons for engagement question maybe. Um, the public is I'm, I'm sorry, what was your what was the question you just asked? So, uh, you know, this, the step two, which is actually now going to become step four or something, it, level of engagement. So we're changing mm -hmm. it. So it was originally, do we engage the community and we're getting rid of that. And we are instead, so can we finalize what we want this step to look like? And do we need that step at all, maybe? Uh, I think it's good to get that level of engagement that might help some people feel a little better. So if we're thinking about this from a human centered design, like backing, right, this is the step where we're empath empathizing with the stakeholder. And so mm. I think that that's where um, we're trying to figure out the, um, what we're trying to understand the problem from their perspective uh, in order to determine what their needs are. So I think that this is, this is part of define the problem, but it's it's really more about understanding the, the perspective. Um, so I know I'm making it more complicated, but I'm, I'm trying to take it back to the, the, the models that I'm used to using with yeah. human design. And so, um, you know, thinking through um, um, that empathize step is... Um. I think we do that in the who is impacted. Let's look at that also for a moment. Who is impacted? And so which specific committee, which groups are already engaged and easy to reach? Which groups are hard to reach? Um, who can we invite to help? Which town departments, committees? And then the engagement itself. I thought that some of the empathy comes in there where we go into the lived experiences of people. Is that what you mean? or? Well, so I, I guess my practice is typically to have that be much, much earlier um, in the process. And so I'm, I'm just trying to get these steps organized in my mind. And I'm... We can do it in whatever, if you have a model no, no, no. that, that, you know, because the stakeholders is going up for see, that's becoming now the second one, right? Right. So this is more about identifying the stakeholders, not as much as, and then when we go into the designing, the actual engagement, the idea was to what sort of questions to ask. And that's where we really want to bring in that empathy of understanding people's lived experiences. What are the challenges? How are they utilizing? Like if you're designing a library, for example, we might be okay, how do you utilize it? What do you, what facility services do you use or not use? And, you know, so it's like really getting to understand how walking in their shoes, rather than even getting people to just say, I like this, or I don't like this, or I want that, you know, like we all have a tendency to jump to the solutions before uh, understanding what are the causes and conditions for these problems to arise. And that's where the whole engagement process is meant to really get into designing what sort of information do we want to collect from different people? Well, and, and then, me, yeah, here's, here's a thought. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, part of me doesn't like the word stakeholders, okay, because it sounds, it can be, some people could interpret stakeholders just to mean business owners and property owners, but when you're mm -hmm. using it with a library, so I'm saying, okay, who is a stakeholder in the library? Well, it's people who have library cards, mm -hmm. people who use the library. It does not include people who don't use the library, but we might wish would use the library because they're not actually stakeholders yet we wish they were but they're not it certainly does not include the majority of the undergraduates at umass because they don't use our public library for scholarly reasons they have their library so, so dorothy can i just interrupt to clarify yeah. the definition of stakeholder is just yeah. anyone who's impacted by a decision 
Yeah. So, but does that mean people who are already involved or people that we yeah. wish were involved? Okay. Both. Be because involved. both would be impacted by and that's if everybody. You're, yeah. That's everybody then. Yeah. So in other words, mm -hmm. if it includes everybody, then it doesn't have any meaning. No, in this particular case, like library, it includes many more people. But if you look at um, maybe some other issue like rental registration, the stakeholders we identified were renters, tenants, uh, landlords, um, neighbors, and those were like the key stakeholders. Right. That one is that one's easy. But I'm just yeah. thinking with the library or or with other cultural institutions, mm -hmm. because all of these such in, all cultural institutions wish they had more members or more active participation, mm -hmm. but they're not stakeholders. They're theoretical. They are, and that's what it, it just depends on how you. So the way it's utilized in um, in. But see, with uh, renters, it's clear you either live there or you rent there or you're the one that owns the property or you live next to the property. Uh, those are pretty clear things. And we can say, yes, those people are involved in this issue. Um, Dorothy, well, one, that, one way that I like to think about it is who is at the table and is impacted and who is not at the table but is impacted, mm -hmm. right? And so you, you're right that stakeholders right off the bat is going to be people who are actively engaged and, or, or directly impacted immediately. But there's also the people who are impacted, but their voice is not currently at the table. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that if it's easier to, or if it, if it makes more sense to shift the word stakeholders into, um, into community members or something like that, right. Um, then that I'm, I'm, I'm less interested in going down the semantics hole about the word stakeholders. I think that there's better ways to get at that. Um, yeah. But I do think that it's important to define what we mean when we say that whatever word we choose, mm -hmm. um, and that's what's important. So I, I think that that could be a way to to ask that. And she's and Shalini's got some really great questions here of you know which groups are already engaged. Right. That would be the like at the table um, mm -hmm. and impacted, and then you know who is impacted but isn't currently engaged um, or whose voices we haven't heard. Um, mm -hmm. And those are the questions that I think she's trying to ask in the in number three. Um, and number one. So I, I guess I I think this, if it makes people more comfortable to shift away from the word stakeholders, then maybe that's a conversation we can have. But I'd, I'd rather we be clear on what we mean, regardless of the word we use. But is there a better word that no. reflects um, so on in your human-centered design? What is the word? I've just used to using the word. Stakeholders. I'm used to using stakeholders as well. Word sometimes you saying stakeholders because like for example in the discussions of the library there has been discussion of of what, wishing that there were more black young people who use mm -hmm. the public library and then we heard well they don't see themselves uh, represented there um, so it's kind of the word stakeholder in that case I mean you're talking about you know who has a stake kind of in that issue that. anyone who has but a stake is, in that issue. It, I think it means what it okay, does. Okay, Anika, one minute. Like, yeah. can we, okay, can we I, I just, I, I think it means what it does. I also think that we need to, to be careful. There are, you know, when we make statements and say that, you know, all Black people don't see themselves in the library, I mean, there are, there are reasons that the library is not seen as inclusive, you know, and mm -hmm. that's clear. And I think that is clear to anyone walking in the library, if that's how you're looking at. So if, you know, I think that also this is, um, you know, unless I'm missing the point here, this is about how will we get community to be involved? You know, how do we get people to be involved and have the numbers so we actually have people in the audience and they, you know, they want to participate with us. I think that in some of the cases, you know, knowing the audience, I'm not sure if we should look at this individual when we have more time because also uh, with engagement, some of the questions you wanna ask early on is the amount of time that you have and that can determine Absolutely. you know, who you're gonna get to and, and why. And, you know, um, and clearly we're looking at the tables and who's at the table, but I think we also need to have that lens where if we're at the table and we, we're not making it our business to create more seats, you know, um, for others to join the table, what, what are we here for? So, right. um, whereas I really, um, 
I, I appreciate this. I think that we have to see, like, we, we don't know. We don't know what the issue is going to be. And mm -hmm. I think that when we're, you know, in the beginning looking at the facts and how, what, who do we know, who do we need to reach out to? In most cases, we're going to have a time frame. You know, whether it's a hearing or what's going on, we're going to know how much time we have. And then you can kind of do that at the beginning. You're working backwards, you know, how you need to roll out and engage and what you need to present. So it's crystal clear. We're not misleading people, mm -hmm. so on and so on. Okay, I think that's Andy a really valuable here. point. And I yeah. see Andy's hand is up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, share with you that I uh, took the time to see what Miriam Webster's um, definition of stakeholder under the circumstances we're describing. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I lost it for a second, but uh, hopefully I'll get back to it. Uh, but it is essentially um, somebody who is, here it is, one who is involved in or affected by a course of action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Involved in or affected by mm -hmm. course of okay. action. Yeah. So that's. Mm -hmm. Let's define it. I think it would be good to define it early at, up front. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, Anna, your right. hand was up next. It was, and it's it's for a sad reason. One, I'm curious, Andy, if you have the dic dictionary up for Scrabble reasons. Um, but two, <laughs> I have to, um, I do have to leave us early today, and so this this is going to be my point of exit. But Shalini, um, I before I do that selfishly, I'd love to know what would be helpful from us if you'd like us to mark this up and bring it to yeah. the next meeting. Yeah, or, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, so to like if you can go through the questions or any other, we've started reordering the process and all, but if you can yeah. add more questions and like even what do we do? Because I what I didn't add was okay, because that's where we are at rental registration. We have all this information, but what do we do? Who's going to right. analyze it? Right, right. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so what add more questions. You? And also, I wanted to ask Dorothy, do we want to move to a little discussion on the zero waste? Okay, I do have to leave, but um, okay. Thank I'll you watch so the recording much. later. Thank you all. All right, yeah. bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye. Um, okay, so if you are saying that you are content with what we've thrown in on the table up to now, mm -hmm. and um, what what yeah, because actually our meeting should end, I believe, at eight o'clock. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, and it's quarter of eight. So mm -hmm. thank you, Shalini. Then uh, we'll kind of pause our pursuit of this uh, really interesting project. And we mm -hmm. will kind of put our minds to it and see if we can get somewhere. And Andy, that was a really great definition. Okay. Thank you, Shalini. I, I appreciated that. You're welcome. Um, okay, so we have these other items. Let me just see if I can find the paper again. Uh, okay. Well, we have zero waste and we have the lighting policy and what else was, wasn't there something else that was given to us last night or was it just zero waste and the lighting policy, street light policy? Those were the two, uh, those two issues. Yeah, okay. They're, they're not small, so. <laughs> they're, they're not small. And um, so I'll just start off on zero waste. Um, interest and excitement on zero waste. Lots and lots of questions on zero waste. And I uh, don't have the, my minutes in front of me, my notes that I take, but um, there clearly is, is concern that uh, we might really not get response uh, competitive bidding um, because we're dealing with a private company and, and, and private companies and you know, do they wanna do it? Will they do it? Um, there was some discussion of, and I can't get them of the little towns. Is it Leverett that has this? Shootsbury. Shootsbury. Okay. Who, are you, is anyone familiar with the Shootsbury system to see how re related do, do they have a They have a town contract. Car yeah, they have a town contracted system. And what I understand, I haven't spoken to the person there, but the people, the research that's been done so far by the Smith College they reached out to Shootsbury and I have a list of the names who they reached out. Anyway, what they do know is that they sent this town sends out the RFP and they have been getting different companies, mainly there are three, the Casella Republic and USA. 
that have been responding and they have changed. Uh, so they have been getting bids from different um, so, companies. Yeah, I'm really confused because we had three companies here just the other day. And then mm -hmm. I thought that I heard that USA bought them out, but they couldn't have bought them out if these companies exist outside of our realm. So mm -hmm. that is you know, just basic facts. Yeah. I mean, I the problem is, is that I think that Shalini and I have spent so much time on this, so we could go on for hours about this <laughs> topic, and I don't think we want to do that tonight for obvious reasons. Mm. Uh, the answer to your quick question is, is that, uh, you know, five years ago, there was Amherst Trucking and Dussault, and those were the major providers. And uh, uh, there was a lot of people who were unhappy because Two companies were sending trucks down the same streets every right. week. To I do was the same was thing, there. and actually, two trucks, one for uh, recycle and one for regular trash. Um, and uh, the um, it, both companies were bought by USA Trucking. Now we have the consequences of both of those prior subscription providers who. Uh, who are now um, belonging to the same company. The other, um, there are other companies, but the other companies do more dumpster kind of things in either businesses or at apartment complexes. Um, they don't do the curbside pickup from homes. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, things that we don't know yet. It is a complicated process. And, um, you know, Shelly and I have spent a lot of time with our colleagues who were the sponsors talking about this, but in trying to figure it all out and talking to other communities. Okay. Um, I see, uh, I, I'm not sure who was first, Shalini or, or Anika, um, the hand up. Okay. And Shalini, I'm sorry. Okay, okay Shalini. Yeah, I was thinking that. Uh, maybe we can come up with a process how we're going to move forward with um, tackling this huge issue. And I just started to put down some thoughts like take each section of the bylaw and, you know, I mean, that's how we're doing with the rental registration mm -hmm. is like we're taking each section and then we compare it. And then part of that is identify a few sample towns that that are comparable to us within Massachusetts. And then who can we invite and speak to like ECAC, Susan Wade, who are the other people who are helpful and that we can invite mm -hmm. to start talking about it. Those were just some of the few steps. And then there are some basic documents like which I can upload maybe to our TSO, like make a zero waste folder. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that went into the memo and the bylaw changes and everything. So everyone has access yeah. to the same um, information. All right. So so here is my suggestion that what you just described, a process um, of how we go through the document, um, what towns to check out, what speakers to invite, mm -hmm. and what the basic documents are, that you, and I guess it's Andy, and I think Jennifer is, uh, is Jennifer's on this zero waste, I think, too. Jennifer Taub. Anyway, the committee She's a the people, sponsor, but yeah, yeah, I can do it because we have access. Andy and I have access to the TSO. So okay, so it. if you could bring mm -hmm. us at our next meeting a process and a some and a timeline, right? Um, an idea because I, at this moment I have no idea how much time we would need to spend on doing this, but it sounds like a lot of stuff. And um, I mean, what I saw was there is great support for this. There's just a lot of questions of how are we going to do it. Mm -hmm. So if we can have a decent process and also figure out, you know, this is really for Shalini, when we should, you know, who we invite and when we should, I guess we'll have public comment, that kind of stuff, so that we get our input as we go, but we need, we need to get our facts straight and we need to know how to do that. Um, that would be very useful. And Andy, can you work on that with Shalini, the steps, the process? Yeah, I have some other thoughts I was going to add, but I wanted to hear from Anika first. Okay, great. Anika. Okay, thank you, because I have a actually two-part question, and the, and the second was for you, Andy. Um, so I'm getting caught up um, with this issue, and it's unclear on all of the, um, the benefits of it. 
And um, I was actually talking to my neighbor who just moved out, who was saying that I'm not sure if the town uses the same company uh, throughout the town, but she was saying that at least it's the company that comes to where I am on Chestnut Street that now they're offering um, compost bins um, to drop compost bins. So I don't know if um, everyone, you know, that she also brought up something that I had never heard about before, but I'm not an expert here that drywall, apparently drywall can be taken away with compost as well. Um, so th that was just something that I, you know, heard today, I've never heard that before. But um, so my question, I guess for everybody, but um, specifically Andy is, what are, like, what would be the, the opposition or do you think, or are there, um, financial concerns around this? Um, what are the obstacles there? Mm -hmm. It's great that we went the order we did because I was actually gonna hit on that last issue. Paul has very strong concerns about this and he's usually at our meetings in the staff to our committee. And um, so it's really um, important that we bring, get him engaged in this. Um, I think that he has an understanding because of his experience and how um, trash collection works and what the costs are. Um, and um, there are things that we have to know about, like who is doing the um, organ the contracting, who's who are our neighbors going to when they want to get trash pickup and who is doing the billing and who is collecting the payments? Is it the town or is it the contractor? And um, it, because it is a town provided service and if it's a town provided service, then we have to make sure that we understand who the staff is and how that staff is being paid. Um, so there's that whole series of issues that are in there. Um, and I think that we really um, can't get ahead of the process now mm -hmm. because I think that it's unfortunate that we're um, starting the conversation without having Paul present for it because, and the other one is Guilford because uh, it is under the public works realm. And I think that uh, there's real concern that we are putting so much on Guilford right now with the lighting policy, the changes in the water and sewer regulations, and this one that there isn't staff capacity at public works department to handle this. So we have to hear from our staff about that. I don't think that you know we can um, talk about it. I don't have an opinion about it, but I sort of am aware that there was this concern raised. Um, and one additional question Nika, that you had raised was this, yes, USA Trucking does have uh, compost as an additional service available for an additional price, um, but we're not sure what the price is, quite honestly, I don't know. And we do know that they don't advertise it, you almost have to ask. Um, and uh, <laughs> if you're going to do universal composting, you, you know, you have to decide, does everybody who has curbside pickup at home um, have it? Then another issue is, is that for getting just to the curbside, because we haven't even got to people who use the uh, transfer station and just take their trash to the transfer station. What, a, what about people who have a backyard compost heap and would never throw anything into it, um, into, into a bucket that go, that's picked up? And why would they want to pay? Should they be uh, required to pay? So that there are a myriad of issues that um, sort of flow from this proposal. I don't think that it is a simple question. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this 90 day reporting back, I think it is going to be a report back. I can't imagine that we're going to be done in time. And I guess the last thing that I'll just quickly say to, um, you know, we spent a fair amount of time because she only talked to people in Shrewsbury. I had long conversations with people in Arlington 
um, who was one of the towns cited by Veronique, who is the um, Susan White's predecessor, and they were one of the towns from Massachusetts who were cited as having a very successful program. And uh, so I have a real understanding now of what it is that, uh, you know, Arlington does and what some of the problems that Arlington has confronted along the way, though they're very enthusiastic and continue to be committed to doing this, but um, it isn't a simple thing. And I think that that's the, uh, um, just the reality that we need to recognize. Oh, okay. And I thank you for that. And um, before I forget it, um, we, and I'm gonna call on you, Shalini, in just a minute. This is a big, big problem project. Um, it has a lot of sponsors. Um, it kind of falls in with what we've been doing with DPW. I agree, we do a lot with DPW. Uh, water, sewer, and waste and composting are kind of like, they are connected. Um, I was thinking how much work do we need to do on um, the lighting one. Um, I could see dealing with that relatively quickly um, if we discuss, as was mentioned in the town council meeting, discuss the questions about dark skies, shading, um, light spectrums, and then the question of how many and are you going to remove lights in, in whatever. Um, you know, when we have to get back in 90 days, it doesn't mean we've solved the problem. We have a finished product. It just means we tell people what we did and what we didn't do. Um, so um, we can either say we're going to go spend a lot of time and do zero waste, which is supposedly going to save money. Okay, as well as the environment. And, that's, and then do the lighting, or we can say, we think we could do the lighting quickly and then do zero waste. Um, but we're not gonna do both of them at once, I don't feel like, okay? So that would be one thing to say in terms of having all of these things on top of DPW. Um, so that's what I'm throwing out there and now I'm gonna call in Shalini. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the, in, like when we're prioritizing what issues we're dealing with, uh, in my mind, zero waste is a way higher Im importance than lighting issue, which we, what I heard in the council meeting was there were two peeps, peep residents who have reported on it. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there are more, but right. it's not something that people, residents have been writing to us. And right. I cannot justify to my constituents who've been writing to me about potholes, mm -hmm. about safety of not being able to bike at night or during I, the day and, and to mm -hmm. say, oh, now we're working on this project, which no one has brought up before us, whereas zero waste, we've heard from so many people right. and it impacts, has social justice. Yes, it is a more complicated issue, no doubt, but we start with one step in front of the other. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we just start doing that. And same thing with staff. It's not that we tell, we are not going to dictate to DPW, hey, tomorrow you need to switch over, but we're going to engage with them and we're going to engage with them. And we'll start doing the groundwork that we need to do is to start gathering information, talking to different people, looking at different towns, doing our own research. And we'll work with the staff that what is the time, but we need a timeline from them because if we leave it to, we'll do it when they're free, it may mm -hmm. never happen. Right. But let's work with them to have some sort of goals that, mm -hmm. and before the goals also with them, I think we need to do our work of talking to other towns and documenting mm -hmm. all this research to see how they are dealing with um, mm -hmm. you know, the different aspects of this issue. So that's what so I'm proposing. I've, good, good thoughts. And I have a question here for Andy. Um, Shalini brought up the roads and potholes. We know that's number one for so many people. But we've been told by Paul that we have, I, I'm, I never remember numbers, but is it $12 million backlog? It's a really big number in roads and we can't create more money. So my question to Andy is, we know that the roads are a huge issue and money is one of the major things that's holding us back from doing all that needs to be done. Will zero waste, I mean, in the end, it's supposed to save money. Is it going to be also challenging us financially 
to get it started is is a fine is it that going to be one of the problems or or is it not i don't think we know that yet because it's uh uh i think we have what we're hoping to hear from um susan wait is is um towns that have in the last few years made the switch so that we can talk to a town that has adopted this new procedure and what was involved in making that change. And Susan has uh, so far not responded to several requests to do that and provide that information. And she's the one who would have the most access to the list. Mm -hmm. uh, there, uh, So it, it does depend in that regard on what you know? What help and response that we get? Yeah. The financial aspect of it will get back to the finance committee eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, uh, you know, to not get in, you know, a lot of cities and towns historically provided trash pickup as just a regular tax supported right. service, and um, in Massachusetts we have. A unique problem because if a community like Amherst in Northampton did not provide it, then in order to um, to provide it within the budget, you would need to pass an override to increase taxes for that purpose. And then there are a whole lot of questions that come up about well, what's the fairness of increasing taxes to do this if you're also offering um, the transfer station as an option because then transfer station users are paying for a service that they didn't ask to receive um, and uh, you know it's those kinds of um, questions that uh, we really need to be exploring quite hard in order to understand this and um, it's not going to be simple or quick, but mm -hmm. um, you know, as Shalini has pointed out, if we don't begin, we'll never move along right. to addressing, identifying, and then addressing these questions. And you get back to the process we started about earlier. As we gain information, that's when we start wanting to really hear from the public, because. Um, you know, they're, as um, all of us have experienced, they're the ones who will benefit and they're the ones who will pay the expense. And I, I maybe I should conclude my thought on the uh, financing. If you can't increase taxes and do it as an override, then the other way to do it is to build, to use an enterprise fund approach like water and sewer so that people who are purchasing um, the service pay for the service um, through an enterprise fund similar to water. Somebody who is, uh, has a, is in a rural area and has a well, they don't pay to anything for water because the water isn't being provided by the town. Mm -hmm. um, so an enterprise fund is very much of a possibility um, and we actually have a uh, um, enterprise fund already because we use it to administer the landfill, uh, the transfer station or other recycling center. So um, it, it is a complicated matter. And um, I think that what we need to do is decide what the committee needs to know first and get that body of information in a little more organized fashion uh, than my three or four minutes that I've taken or five minutes to, to, to describe it and kind of outline it um, as, as we can. And uh, that will give us um, a sense of where to go forward. Right. And okay, Shalini, thank you, Andy, it's, very much. Yeah, no, thank you, Andy, for summarizing. And I think there are one other option which is a lesser preferred option is that the billing is done by the hauler mm -hmm. and i'd spoken to susan wade about it and she wasn't really supportive of it like if we this was like the worst possible scenario that we do move to town contracting 
but the hauler does the billing and that way she said there was less transparency and less control so we don't want that i mean ideally i think it would be an enterprise fund but those are the things we're going to study is like what are the different towns what are the different mechanisms towns are using the second thing about finance is that susan was very clear that the state is really pushing for the pay as you throw model and uh, anika that's the other reason why even though you, um, usa is providing composting they basically are charging more for it and it's penalizing right now like we, darcy and i compared our rates and she's composting and she has a 30 um gallon mm -hmm. bucket and she's paying more and i have a 95 gallon bucket which i get pick up every week and she's paying more than i am she gets every two week pickup because she has very little waste and and i mean of course she's doing composting which i have called them and i haven't heard from them yet but basically she's paying more with less waste mm -hmm. and I'm paying Why? You know, less. Why? Yeah, so it's very messed up right now. And what we want is a system where the mm -hmm. people who are paying 30, uh, only wasting 30 gallons will pay less and then 65 gallon will pay more. And then what Susan said was that the, t the state is actually providing the buckets to towns who are replacing and moving into this model for composting. So there'll be three buckets and they are, and there is money to get DEP coordinator, just the way we got Veronique last time. So for this implementation phase now, we also need, um, uh, we need the expertise from DEP and there's a grant for that. So that's one other thing we can put down is like, how do we apply for that grant to get the expertise? Mm. Okay. Well, it, it sounds like, a really challenging task, but um, since Bob can't walk still from his foot surgery, I've been having to go to the transfer station and I am really uh, shocked at the level of not the waste you're talking about, packaging waste, just absolutely getting furious. I mean, the, the packaging, particularly of pills and all that stuff. And I, I mean, that's another thing that we need to get get to. Um, and that's, but first we need to do this. We need to, it's really important. Um, and it's a, it's a lot of work that we have to do. Um, so I guess we should just get started on it. And uh, hopefully we have some kind of um, process coming. And Shalini, you got your hand still up? That's... Yeah, so can Andy and I work on coming up with the process? The I, I would appreciate that yeah. very much. Yeah. Okay. And uh, can Andy, can you handle that? I, I'm always worried about you because I know you do so much on the finance committee. Um, yeah, no, I've, I've had a lot of interest in, you know, I've worked with Shalini already quite a bit on this through the uh, uh, process that we engaged in to make the presentation, which Shalini gets the big hand for. She designed that, was a, that, was she designed that great presentation. Yes. But uh, you know, we, we can work on it. I don't know whether we can do it by our next meeting or not, um, because I'm got a week off in between. Mm -hmm. We're we doing a meeting two weeks from tonight. Uh, I believe so. Um, I don't, we skipped that one meeting. I don't, uh, I have September a I, okay. I can take a look. I got my calendar. Here we are. Yeah, okay. September first is our next meeting. Okay, yes, I'll, Bob, I'll answer in a second or two. Yes, September first. Paul is also not going to be there for that meeting. Mm. Um, then on the fifteenth, we have the Lincoln Avenue parking hearing. Okay, and then I, this. I'm glad you mentioned this because um, uh, the next meeting then would be. Um, October 6th, because we don't meet on the same day that CRC meets. Um, and I, I'm not available on October 6th. I will be out of town at a wedding, just not, not able to Zoom or do anything, okay? Um, so I can, we can have the meeting on that date, which would be or the, all, the schedule that we would normally follow and somebody else run it, which is fine with me. And I guess that's Shalini. So that would mm -hmm. be fine with me. Or mm -hmm. we can do a, a, a meeting 
um, we have our hearing on the 15th, we could do a meeting on the 22nd. In other words, have two meetings close together and then skip that one. So whatever you guys decide, mm. that would be fine with me. Um, so I think September 1st is the problem that I have because I think when I said I was going to be away for a week, it's uh -huh. that week. Yeah, yeah that's okay. hard for me also. 22nd sounds good. Can we maybe send out an email to Arnold and, and like to everyone to check their calendars? For okay, so you're second. suggesting that we actually do not have a meeting on September 1st because there are two people who cannot make that meeting and that mm -hmm. we then have our next meeting the 15th followed by the 22nd. Um, Unless we want to also meet on the 8th so that we can catch up. But I already have one meeting that's interrupting the my week that I'm spending with the kids and the grandkids and mm -hmm. the lake. Um, okay, please, you got to do it. You got to do it. Yeah. Um, no, what no. time does CRC meet? Because the CRC is on the 8th. Four to there... four. Four to six. Yeah, I can, I can make it. So you could do that. Okay. So you're saying, okay, skip 9 1, meet 9 8. Was nine, that, Sandy, did you say you had a problem on the 8th? No, September 8th would work. 8th okay. or 22nd, one of the two. Uh, Andy, do you think we'll be able to do it by 8th? Or we can just send, in other words, have our next meeting on the 15th. Yeah, and, and then, then have 922. Yes, that would be ideal because that will give us enough time to then because I have some deadlines till the end of the month also. Yeah, uh, it's, that would it's, be great. We're also holding a hearing and then possibly making a decision on a recommendation regarding mm -hmm. Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Right, so then we would have, and if we don't mm -hmm. somehow finish the work, we would be meeting the second, mm -hmm. second week and we could do whatever we needed to do. Is that what you're saying? Uh, the meeting mm -hmm. on the 15th. I just think we need to be careful of the 15th not to, uh, we can do something besides the hearing, but I don't think we should it, it think that it's going to be a long period of time. Right. Right. Um, right. Okay. So I have now then that our next meeting would be the 15th of September and the 22nd of September. That is what I have from this discussion. Yeah. Um, so so what I will do is Anna. I will check with Anna on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'll get back to you. Because I, I believe that I don't break open meeting law if I communicate with you about meeting times. That's correct. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we have a lot of work to do, okay? Um, TSO seems to be the place where all the stuff is coming. Um, I will not make myself crazy. We're not going to have insane like meetings. And this one's already 15 minutes over time. Mm -hmm. um, we will do things. We will do them in a rational, orderly fashion, following a process that seems clear and meaningful. Um, because, you know, that's the only, I think that's the only way to go. Otherwise, we're just going to be totally burnt out and make mistakes. So, okay. Um, I did not call for public comment tonight. Um, let me just briefly do that um, and see if anyone who of our, our two um, attendees, whether they want to make a comment. Um, if so, they should raise their hand. Um, okay, I don't see a hand. Okay, so I'm um, then we have talked about, we've been talking about agenda. Uh, we could uh, okay the minutes, which are... <laughs> Um, the minutes of July 17th. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the minutes of July 17th? Move or... to approve the minutes. Okay, and do we have a second? Second, Charlie. Remember, did we review them at the, uh, were they in the last packet? Um, they weren't in this packet. That's okay. um, I don't know. I, I Since I have them involved, 
I get them right away. Does, did people see the minutes? That's really, that's the question. You're not we, in this current packet. Then we cannot approve that. Thank you, Andy. Um, because I, I, of course, do see the minutes, so I didn't realize that. Okay. But I can't believe, I don't know why they wouldn't be in the packet or have been into a Unless period. they were in the packet from the prior meeting, which is what I was Because Athena was really, you know, on top During of the that. last. Okay, because she was doing everything, and I, I just don't think she'd miss up on this, so. Let me um, check. What was the date of the meeting that you're talking about? July 17th. Hmm. Now the in the packet is the um the agenda and the engagement plan. No, that's all that's in this agenda. So so somehow we did not get those minutes distributed, which means that we cannot approve them. So that's right. we will carry that over. Good point. Thank you. And we'll put them in the packet. Um decide somehow I thought that was underway, so I'm I'm a little bit surprised by that. Okay. Remember discussion. Um, also, the packets have not been um, like you know we're doing the community engagement. Then maybe the other documents need to also be. And I wonder who's supposed to be. I mean, I don't want you to be doing that, Dorothy. All of it. I I am so, not doing that. Okay, I yeah, don't. Yeah. Do so it. how would so, like if Angela is doing it, like in lieu of or even when Athena was doing it, how would she know? I guess we have to send the doc because I sent that document. I, you know, like the zero waste bylaw, we're going to have mm -hmm. a brief discussion, for instance. That's on the agenda, but then we need the, uh, like the memo, the presentation you need the slides, whole thing. Absolutely. the whole thing. Yep. So I guess the person who's bringing those up then should contact Athena and yes, send them absolutely. all yeah. the related documents. Yeah. Because yeah. that's not been happening. I've been I've not been seeing and then I come and I'm like I'm not prepared because the documents were not there. And I thought, oh, we're not gonna discuss it, or I'm just a little confused. Okay. Okay, so we, we do have to I do not know how to put them in there. Um mm -hmm. And um, okay, so we need all related documents. Uh, so we have, so we, we're going to have zero waste. The engagement was there though last time. Yeah, just the engagement one was uh, like the, but I might have put like for instance the last presentation slides also with it as a because that's a connected okay. document. So, uh, we have to give everything to Athena in, in yeah. time. If yes. she does right. that. So if we if yeah. she doesn't get it, then you know it's not right. going to be. Right. Right. Okay. So um, I see no more business to do tonight, and we can um, have a motion to adjourn. Um, yeah, good to see you, Anika. Great to see you yes. all. Yes. Yes. Right. I'm gl so glad you're back. Um, mm. Did you see? We we've missed you, and um, I missed you all too. So good to see all your faces. Yeah, <laughs> and we don't we don't want to send you into a, you know into a relapse or anything by piling too much work on okay <laughs> where it's going to be we're going to be an orderly committee that does its stuff as best it can okay yeah. and as andy pointed out it's a very complicated issue um, it is you know, one step at a time yes take the first step, step. okay i'll yeah. definitely be reaching out to to people or yeah please that's to get caught up. That's yeah thanks. absolutely please reach out okay. I will. Thank you all. Right. Have a great all night. Right. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Meeting adjourned. Right. Mm -hmm.